Yep, Cochrane. Hello, welcome to another stream. How about that? How about that? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today is Friday, and that means today, according to the Skidadel Eskidoodle, we are doing a random one-off stream. So what that means? That means I pick a random topic and I stream it for a single stream. That's what we do today, and the random topic of today is. You guessed it, Coughlin. Uh, hello, Elkras. Hello, Igoduk. Hello, Sadmanet. Hello, Ivan Ho. Hello, Mr. Botka. Zero Jadamp. Uh, uh, Serious Sergio. Move AX. Malachian Nair. I hope everyone's nickname correct is Carface. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, human Abstract. Uh, Epic Peer Pairs. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. So, yeah, so what we're gonna do today, I don't really have any particular plan for today. I just want you to check out Kotlin. Kotlin is a programming language developed by JetBrains. You probably heard about that programming language. And as far as I know, it compiles to JVM and also it can compile to native and probably it can also compile to JavaScript. Let's be honest, it's 2020. Uh, everything compiles to JavaScript. Hello, Raguel, welcome to the stream. So th this is what we're gonna check today. This is what we're gonna check today. I have an interesting idea for today, actually. Uh, actually, 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 maybe it's not that important, but yeah. Anyway, so I'm gonna just try to uh, set that language up. I'm not gonna use, by the way, IntelliJ idea because it doesn't really work well uh, when I'm streaming. So we're gonna use e Emacs and we're gonna compile from the command line. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun trust me hello free for welcome to the stream so yeah 
uh, let's try to download this shit. Uh, I know that if you have like IntelliJ ID, it just like comes with Kotlin or something, but uh, I don't even know how to set up the. Yeah, I, I think I, I tried it like once. Uh, command line compiler. So every release uh, ships with the standalone version of the compiler. You can download the latest version at GitHub releases. Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that. Uh, so, oh shit, that's a lot of uh, fucking issues that were fixed. Uh, they use, the, yeah, the, oh, they have their own issue tracker as far as I know, right? Uh, it's a fuck you track. Yes, yes, I do remember this one. Uh, okay, so, and we have to scroll down below for the links uh, of the compiler. For the links of the compiler. Jesus Christ, you have to actually scroll like down, way down. I thought it's gonna be... Okay. Uh, so what we need? I guess we need compiler. This one is probably cross-platform and they also have a version of native. So I'm thinking maybe we can download both. Why not? Why the fuck not? So let's go to uh, probe uh, and uh, let's make dear... Uh, let's call it Coquelin, yes, yes, so we're gonna have a directory literally called Coquelin and we're gonna download all of that shit. So I'm downloading just the compiler. Uh, just the compiler. What is prop? It's a special uh, folder where I try things out. I prop them, if you know what I mean. Uh, so, and let's also download the native compiler. <clears throat> Why not? There we go. Mm -hmm. What is the folder where you catch things? I'm not really sure what you mean, I'm sorry. What's up, Hamiko? Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, try catch. Ah, I see. Uh, uh, so, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to start with the Coquelin compiler. I'm going to start with the Coquelin compiler, uh, not a native one. So it doesn't look like it's a tar bomb, so that means I can just un uh, unzip it. Right, it's going to be a Coquelin compiler, and there we go. So in the Coquelin compiler we have bin and lib. I suppose in lib we have jar files. I mean, that's how a usual JVM application looks like. And uh, let's actually go here. And I suppose we have Kotlin C, which is a Kotlin compiler. Oh, there we go. So you can actually compile it to JavaScript if you want to. Uh, right. And um, also there's a, a bunch of launchers. I think what we need here is actually Kotlin C, which is a shell script, apparently. Um, I see. Okay, so does it look for Java Home? Uh, yes, it does look for Java Home. So basically it uses uh, a JVM from the java home folder so does anybody know what is a java home uh, environment variable so basically jdk and jre, J, JRE have a convention that uh, you should set up environment variable called java home that points at the instance of jdk or jre so and um i think i have jdk uh installed on my machine uh from oracle specifically jdk 13 it's probably already old one Right, it's probably already old one, but it, it, it serves me well, so I don't really have any motivation to update it. And I have a special script, uh, Java environment, which actually sets up Java home and adds Java home to the um, to the path folder, to the path variable. So what essentially I can do, I can just do source opt Java environment, and there you go, I have Java right i have java from the jdk and i have uh, java home setup all right so and that means i can now run kotlin c and uh, let's see if it's gonna fail or something so it picked up the jvm it complains about compatibility or something but oh okay so it's a it's a ripple okay and the first thing i usually put into ripple is one plus one that's a fast language i gotta tell you that's a very fast language I, I don't really know what it was doing, but I mean... Seriously? You can make a language that is slower than Python? 
Well, I mean, it's probably compiles to JVM and then it interprets the JVM or something. I don't know exactly what it's doing there, but that's kind of... Um, okay, can I do things like in Java? System out print ln uh, hello world. Right, and then do something like that. It works, so I can just basically run uh, Java methods and classes. Like, they're available in Kotlin. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, apparently we have a compiler or at least uh, a ripple, right? At least a ripple. And let's take a look at maybe some examples. Um, is there any, any documentation? Any documentation that we could use? Uh, all right, so we have basics, basic types. You know what? Let's actually start with hello world, right? So show me hello world, please. I remember you had a hello world some there you go so here is a hello world um so do i have um let me see let me see so if i uh, what's the extension of uh, kotlin the, the file extension uh what's the file extension a file extension of kotlin kt okay makes sense uh main kt so uh Cool. Fun. Uh, Veeam doesn't have a highlighting for Coughlin. What the fuck? Why Veeam doesn't have a highlighting for Coughlin? All right, so I'm going to try to do Emacs then. Let's give it, uh, Emacs a try. Uh, and it does have it, uh, probably because I already have it installed. Um, I, I think I tried Coughlin very long time ago when it just came out. So wh when Coughlin uh, actually came out? Uh, Emacs doesn't go, doesn't come with a Kotlin extension, that's for sure. Um, I think I just installed it. Nine years ago, yeah, so I tried Kotlin nine years ago when it only came out. Seriously, it was like huge news, like, oh my god, the new language! You know how usually it goes in, in Hacker News. So, uh, and I tried it out and I just forgot about it. So, and I haven't tried it uh, since then. Um, so that's what, and, so, and I probably have an extension installed in Emacs since those times. So, yeah. <clears throat> Cheers, by the way. Mm. So, probably if I spend some time installing some extensions for. Um, for Vim, it would work as well. Right. Okay, so we need to have a hello world. So essentially what I can do here, I can just do print len hello world. And can I just compile it by using uh, like Kotlin bin Kotlin C and then main KT. Will that just compile that? Um, uh, but uh, that when you tried that nine years ago, this must have been in another system still with NixOS. No, I actually tried NixOS relatively recently. It was nine years ago. Nine years ago, I was, I was still in university. So I didn't even know NixOS existed. NixOS probably existed, but I didn't know about it. So that's how old I am. Uh, yes. <clears throat> okay, so it compiled something. It created a class file. It created a class file. Look at that. A single class file, by the way. So to run a class file, you usually use Java. And there you go. It actually printed Hello World. There we go. You don't need ADEs. You don't need Gradle. You don't need any of that Zoomer shit. You can just grab the compiler and compile your program. Bet you didn't know that. So uh, let's take a look at what kind of code the uh, like the Kotlin compiler generated. Not everybody knows that, but um, uh, Java uh, JDK has a pretty cool tool called JP, Java P, and you can basically <clears throat> decompile the Java classes. Uh, yeah, there we go. So and it shows you like an assembly of JVM code. And I gotta tell you, this is actually pretty straightforward. And it it doesn't even uses it doesn't even use any any Kotlin runtime, it uses only JVM runtime. Yeah, look at that, because it calls to Java system out, print stream, and so on and so forth. So it, it uh, creates like an additional additional method with without the arguments. I wonder if Java does the same. 
Hello, the gorilla. Welcome to the stream. Mm, so I, let's actually try to write a hello world in, in pure Java and, see, and just compare them. Mm, static void main. So if I remember correctly how to do that. Uh, can anybody tell me why I remember how to do that? Why do I fucking remember all this shit? Jesus fucking Christ. So fucking sad. Anyway, so, and uh, we can just compile all of that, right? Uh, and it also prints hello world, and we can do JavaP, J, uh, Java P and just look at the uh, executable. Yeah, it just, uh, the uh, Kotlin just generates a little bit uh, like different code, a little bit more code. But apart from that, it's actually pretty close to Java, right? Um, um, <clears throat> cool. So, uh, we managed to write Hello World. That was actually kind of cool. I really like that. Uh, I wonder if I can uh, create an environment that adds uh, Kotlin C, like Kotlin Bean, automatically to my path. Uh, to my path so I don't have to do any of this shit. So let's actually give it a try. Uh, I'm gonna write something like uh, Kotlin C env, right? And uh, let me do a shell mode. A shell mode. Maybe it has to be a sage mode. I think it has to be a sage mode. And essentially what we're gonna do here, we're gonna export path, right? Um, uh, okay, so it has to be something like this. Let me let me see the full path. I want to see the full path. Uh, Kotlin C, Kotlin C, then bin, and then we add path that we already had. All right. So that means I can now do the following thing. Uh, yeah. What am I doing wrong? Ah, I see. So I have to move it here. There we go. So now I can do something like uh, source Kotlin environment. Please work. What am I doing wrong? Yeah, there we go. Uh, con mm -hmm. Source Kotlin C environment. And now Kotlin C is available in my path. So I can just do Kotlin C. And I don't have to worry about that. So another thing that we probably can, uh, can use is Kotlin CJS. And maybe we can even compile our program to Kotlin CJS. Is it okay to use relative path in, uh, in paths? Well, they work. But if, you, uh, if you're gonna go to a different place, they're not gonna work. So as long as you stay in the same folder, the work so <laughs> i mean th that's that's exactly what you would expect from a relative uh, paths in a path environment variable like i don't know if you can expect anything else but um anyway so what i wanted i wanted to try to compile that to uh to js so we have kotlin c js right js and i'm gonna run it on main kt and let's see if it's gonna generate our, our uh like uh Generate as a JS file. Okay, specify output file via output. Okay, so does it have to be main JS? I can make it the main JS if you want to. Um, so hopefully, okay, so it just wanted like output path. I'm okay with that. And it generated as something, would you look at that? And there you go. So, also defined Kotlin. So Kotlin comes from here. Okay, so it has some sort of module system. Airwell domain is dependency. Kotlin was not found. Please check Kotlin is loader prior to main. Okay, that's really strange. But can now can we now run this entire thing? Can I just do main JS? And uh, yeah, there we go. It, it is not runnable, apparently. Um, nice. Nice language. So, you had one job and you fucking failed it. Anyway, so we're gonna use the JVM version then. Mm -hmm. 
so what else can we do with this language? <clears throat> what else can we do with this language? Oh shit, we forgot to, to check the native one. We forgot to check the native one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna have a Coquelin. Uh, and let's do ter, uh, tar fvt Kotlin native. Okay, so I can just, uh, uh, you know, uncompress it and it's not gonna, you know, blow up in my folder or anything. Uh, it looks relatively the same. And it also has a Kotlin C. Okay, okay. So, and is it like an actual executable? No, it's also a shell file. Would you look? Okay. So, wait a second. Is the native version also written in JVM? Is it? Seriously? Well, um, wait a second. Um, I'm actually kind of confused. Find type file name. Does it have a jar files? Okay, so apparently people forgot how to program in C and C++. I mean, they only know how to program in Java. I mean, I don't blame them. C and C++ are hard. So let's try the following thing. I'm going to do Kotlin uh, native Linux bin uh, Kotlin C and... Uh, okay. Please compile. They not only don't know how to program in C and C++, they don't even know how to generate a binary code. They need to rely on a clank. I... Okay. Okay. Nice language you got there, JetBrains. Yep. Clank. Yep, Clang. It cannot even properly download. Like, something is wrong with the terminal, that's for sure. Something's wrong with the Jared terminal. And I don't even know, like, the progress. Is it gonna... Is it gonna finish now? Uh, when is it gonna finish? Can, it, can you just print normally? Uh... I'm not gonna wait for that, fuck that. So apparently the only thing we can rely on is JVM. The only thing we can rely on is JVM. It prints something, I don't care. So if it doesn't work right away, I couldn't be bothered, I'm sorry. Um, there's too many languages on the market, I could not be bothered to deal with the shit of another one. So uh, let's take a look at uh, what we can do with this language though. Let's take a look at what we can do with it. So basic types. Mm -hmm. Basic types. So we have byte, short, int, long. Okay. Oh, you can define functions within functions. That's kind of cool. Um, let's actually take a look at this uh, small example. I kind of like it. So this is going to be main and I can basically print double. Imagine using camel case in 2020. Uh, so, oh, and you can, you can do it like that. I really like when you, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, I really like when you, uh, specify the types after the name of the variable, uh, because maybe it reminds me about, uh, the Pascal times. I, I don't know. It kind of makes more sense to me. Um, so, and we're going to try to print this thing. Yeah. And I like that you don't have to specify any um, semicolons. You don't have to specify any semicolons. So it has a keyword val. Does it act the same as the keyword val in Scala? Does it have var? Uh, so basically, what's the difference? Val is immutable and var is mutable. At least in Scala. I don't know Coquelin. So maybe it's, it's kind of different in Coquelin, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. So, uh, and I like that it uses like a suffix system similar to C. I can really appreciate that. Uh, and uh, without the suffix, I suppose it, yeah, it, it's just double. Um, by the way, hello, Drakon. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, and I'm going to try to compile this thing up. To compile this thing, I probably have to start Emacs from within the developing environment. Otherwise, I won't be able to call the compiler. 
okay, Coquelin, Kotlin, Kotlin C, main KT, and let's just C, let's just C. Mm -hmm. I especially like the how much time it takes to start up this entire thing. Uh, at least it's complaining about unused variables. Uh, I can appreciate that as well. And then if we try to print i, it will um, have a, a type check error, I suppose. Uh, does it have a watch mode, by the way? <laughs> All right, so it does have a, uh, okay, so let's, yeah. But if I put d here, it will, it will probably print it. Uh, I forgot how slow uh, JVM languages are. I just forgot because I've probably programmed in them for quite some time. And yeah, there we go. If you have a nested function, right? So it actually generates a separate class file. So if you're gonna use too many features, like Kotlin features, it will generate more and more class files. This feels painful. Well, welcome to JVM world, by the way. Welcome to the JVM world. It is what it is. There's nothing we can do about that. And would you look at that? No class uh, definition found error. Kotlin JVM function function one. Okay, so we need some sort of a runtime apparently for Kotlin to work. Uh, the Thenur. Uh, so yeah, uh, apparently there is some sort of a runtime that we need to take into account. Let's actually see if we can do that. So it's probably located here. Uh, Kotlin runner. Uh, is there like a single jar that represents the Kotlin runtime? I wonder. Kotlin runner. Uh, mm, there's a Kotlin std lib. Maybe that's the thing that we have to use here. So does Java have like a CP of some sort? Uh, does it have a CP of some sort? Oh my god. It also prints it on standard error, so I cannot even... Oh, I, I have to redirect it to the standard output to be able... Uh, classical fucking JVM. Anyway, so uh, yeah, it does have a CP, so I can probably do something like CP. Uh, Kotlin C lib... Uh, was it lib Kotlin um, std lib jar? And uh, can I just do main kt, main kt, is it main kt? Probably main kt. Uh, could not find class not found. Uh, excuse me, it was right there. It's, it's right there. How can you not find it? Okay, it can... Um, do I have to specify it before this thing? Okay, so it's... All right. Uh, Kotlin JVM functions. <clears throat> I see. I see, I see, I see. Uh, so it's probably designed to be used with Gradle or something. Um, what is a Kotlin JVM? Does anybody know what is a Kotlin JVM? Kotlin C JVM. Um, suffer. I guess. I don't even know, like, like why? It's so strange. Uh, getting started for Android. What am I missing? I'm missing something very important, but they, they always expect you to use these stupid things like Gradle or IDE, but can I just not use them, please? Like, can I just have like a normal uh, command line utility that just compiles me thing that I can just run? Why is that so hard? I don't quite understand. Uh, working with the command line. Okay, so... Include run... Okay, so we can actually include runtime and uh, turn it into jar. Okay, so that's probably what we need. Um, so let's remove all of the classes here, super quick. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's that's why it didn't work. Kotlin C, uh, main KT, include runtime, 
um, main jar. Okay, let's see what's gonna happen. So many ecosystems target normal using ID, you know. I exactly, it's just unbearable. Uh, Alright, Java jar, main jar. Oh shit, would you look at that? That, that worked, that printed 1.1 1, uh, and it didn't even complain that much. So I don't remember, does anybody remember how to unpack jar? Because I want to see what's inside of it. And the jar weighs uh, 1.5 megabytes because it probably includes a lot of like uh, Kotlin runtime. Uh, so I know that it's just zip. Can I just do something like this? Oh, I can, nice. I can just unzip it. Cool. That's a lot of shit, by the way. That's the whole Kotlin runtime uh, right in the jar. But at least it's self-contained, right? So at least it's self-contained. Um, because why not? Mm. All right, all right. And uh, what I want to do here, maybe it makes sense for me to create a make file. <laughs> I'm building Kotlin with make files. Eat that, normies. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> uh, so it's gonna be this thing. Yeah, boy, boy. There we go. There we go. I can just now do make, uh, and that will just work for me. How about that? How about that? Epicu, absolutely fucking epicu. Hmm. Everything about and probably even works. I might as well actually go and make something like run. Uh, so it's gonna be a phony target, of course. And uh, which is gonna do G Java jar main jar. And we can also make it depend on main.jar because why not? So essentially I can just do make run and if it's needed, it will automatically rebuild it for me. So uh, I can now make any changes to this thing in, for example, uh, 6.9, right? And then it will rebuild and automatically run it for me. No Gradle is required. How about that? No Gradle is required. Who fucking need all of this bloated shit? All right, would you look at that? 69, cool. So let's actually follow the tutorial. Uh, let's follow the tutorial or something else. I don't I have no idea. Uh, so this is how we build everything. Compiling the library. Uh huh. Using command line to run scripts. Okay, I think I know enough. I think I know enough. Uh, so let's go to the documentation and see what other things we we are able to do here. We have a idioms. Creating DTOs. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, I remember that. This is just like Scala. Does anybody have any experience with Scala? Yeah. So it does have da data classes like that, and you can probably even create algebraic data uh, data types um, by having like a abstract stuff and stuff like that. Hmm. Make the Twitch API GitHub API interaction is suggested a few years ago, but in Kotlin. I don't know how to tell you, but I personally find, you know, writing API clients kind of boring. It doesn't sound very exciting to me. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'd rather do something more interesting. Um, okay. Uh, so, idioms. Creating details. Let's create this DTO. Uh, so, provide a customer class with the following uh, functionality getters. Equals hash code. Imagine using getters, by the way. Got them. Default values for functions. Uh, filtering lists. Okay, th that's actually super cool that they show you how to filter list. But how do you create a list? <laughs> okay, so uh, the, do they realize that this is not a working code that they can just check? Uh, okay, so let's try to do Kotlin C and. Um, uh, if it actually starts up, because I mean, I don't know what's going on here. Is this a list? Tell me, this is this a list? Is this a list? It, it is not a list. So, unsupported collection rules outside of annotations. Well, what is that supposed to mean? Can I can I like bind it to uh, one to three? No. You see the problem with this tutorial. You see the problem with this tutorial. Where did they introduce the lists? 
where did they introduce the lists? They didn't. And they show you how to filter lists. JetBrain, are you okay? I do, do you know how to write tutorials? Or like, that's a big brain moment, not gonna lie. Um, so... Um, maybe it's in the basic syntax. Maybe I just missed something. Who knows? Uh, okay, so maybe maybe it's there. Maybe it's there. Lists. Oh, it's a list. Okay, so I, it's my, my fault. I'm sorry. I didn't look at the previous uh, the previous section, so it has to be list of. Uh, is this how? It, yeah, 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 it has to be list of. Okay, and then I can filter all of that. Um, I wonder if I can have like ranges and shit. Four, five, six, seven, and I suppose it has to be like x. Uh, I suppose this is a lambda, right? Uh, x greater than four. Is it gonna not flitter, but filter? Uh, okay, is it gonna? There we go. It works. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? A functional programming. We do have a functional programming. So maybe I should actually follow through this tutorial because it seems to be like it introduces all of the concepts and shit like that. Uh, okay, so again, it's the basic syntax. A package specification should be at the bot at the top of the uh, source file, so you can import shit. Program entry point. You can have functions. Oh, and you can even have a string interpolation. The proper string interpolation, like in TypeScript. Oh my god, this is what I'm talking about. This is how string interpolation has to be implemented. Right, this is what I always fucking talking about. Uh, all right, so let's see. Uh, let's let's do something like uh, fun print sum. All right, it's gonna be a. It's integer. God damn, it reminds me of Scala. It brings back so many memories when I was actually programming in Scala. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let's do print ln uh, sum of a. Oh, and my Emacs extension even highlights the you know the string interpolation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like when string interpolation, you know, just allows you to put arbitrary expressions here. Like this is how it has to be. This is readable. Right, this is readable. This is way better than like printf or whatever. Like it's just, this is how it has to be done. And uh, let's do print sum uh, 60, 65 uh, and four, right? And let's just try to run this entire thing and see what's gonna happen. <clears throat> let's see what's gonna happen. Okay, sum of 65 and 4 is 69. Nice. Very, very fucking nice. I really like that. You can have variable, you have uh, type inference. Nice. I really like that. Ty type inference in 2020 is actually must have, in my opinion. Uh, okay, comments, uh, string templates. Okay. So they don't call it string interpolation, they call it string templates. Why this is not a string interpolation, I don't understand. So why is that a string template? Does it have a... Mm -hmm. So you may contain template expression, uh, pieces of code that are evaluated and those uh, results are concatenated into string. I, I, okay, this is a string interpolation, so they basically call string interpolation their own name. They call them string templates. Okay, sure, whatever, buddy. Uh, conditional expressions. Okay, so it's expression-based language. I can appreciate that. I've worked a lot of uh, with a lot of uh, expression-based uh, languages. Oh, this one is cool. I, I think I heard about this one. So nullable checks. Nullable checks. Essentially, uh, we can have something like uh, parse int. Maybe I'm gonna just have f, right? And I'm gonna have this, and I'm gonna say that this type is gonna be nullable. Right, and let's try to print this entire thing, right? And let's see what's gonna happen. The compiler is supposed to actually complain, if I remember correctly. The compiler is supposed to complain. Okay, it didn't complain, but maybe this is because it can print null. What if I try to do plus one? Will it, uh, will it complain this time? Will it complain this time? Hmm. 
Okay, so now it's actually a complaining. Yeah, yeah. So operator call corresponds to dot qualified call. Okay, that's very interesting. So that means this infix expands to this method call. Does that mean that we can overload, uh, you know, infix operators? That's a very interesting. That's a very interesting hypothesis, which is not allowed on a nullable uh, receiver X. But if I remember correctly, if you do something like if X not equal null, then it will compile. If I remember, I never actually tried that because I never programmed in uh, Kotlin. But I remember somebody told me that it will work now. So it's basically analyzes whether you checked. Yeah, there you go. So essentially it doesn't have like an optional tab or like maybe monad or whatever the fuck. It just analyzes whether you checked a uh, nullable thing to be null, right? And if you checked for nullable thing to be not null, it will allow you to compile that. So um, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, nubla value and null checks, okay. So they already demonstrated this example here, I really like that. Um, type checks and automatic casts. All right. Uh... Oh, that's very interesting. If you already checked a particular variable to be that type, within that if block, it will be automatically casted to that type. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, I... All right, I can also appreciate that. Um, for loops. Okay, so we can uh, actually iterate through the... Uh, through the elements of a collection. You can uh, iterate through the elements of the in, uh, indices and stuff like that. Uh, you can have while loops, when expression. Okay, so what is a when expression? Is it like a pattern matching? It, it's not really pattern matching here. It's rather like a... Maybe it is a pattern matching. But it works on any type, so it is like a pattern matching. Okay, so that's very interesting. Mm, so when expression replaces the switch statement in C-like languages, it's the simplest form, it looks like this. Uh -huh. But it also can pattern match like uh, like dynamic any types. Uh, dynamic any types, all right. So I would expect that it does not perform any destructurization. Oh shit. I remember that parse int returned null, didn't it? Oh shit, that's actually kind of cool. So, um, I want to try that, just a second. So how do you compare strings in Kotlin? How do you compare strings? So if I try to do something like hello equal uh, hello, will that work? Will that work? So can I just compare strings with equal equal without dot equals? Um, <clears throat> can I do something like that? That would be cool. Uh, it is true, but if I try, well, I'm gonna assume that yes. So, and imagine that, you, that I have a bunch of parsers, like a parser A, uh, let's actually do parse hello, and this is gonna be the input, it's gonna be a string, and it's gonna return um, well, let's say integer, because why not, All right? And here's here's the thing, and by the way, it's gonna be nullable. If uh, s equal hello, it is going to return, return uh, 69. Otherwise, it's gonna return null, and I wonder if it's, I wonder if it's gonna automatically return null. Let me try that, parse hello, and if I put hello here, there we go. If I put hello here, will it even compile or uh, and even work? I wish the compilation times were not that big. Okay, so you have to provide like a uh, you know else case here. It's not going to return null automatically, which makes sense. I mean, yeah, why not? Uh huh.
Okay, so it's 69, but if you put a different string here, uh, it should be null. Cool, so that's exactly what I wanted to, to see. So let's actually have a several parsers here. Parser world, and uh, this time, uh, let's say it returns, du returns double, completely different type. Right. Completely different type. And if s is uh, world, uh, we're gonna return double. Mm, return null. Cool. So, and now uh, we can have some sort of input, like when hello, and I suppose this is the thing we can do. I can do parse hello x, and I suppose. Wait a second. Uh. Ah, I completely misinterpreted that. <sighs> sure, exception is only constant as branch condition. Okay, so I completely. I thought it may be like. Yeah, I thought it may be similar to unapply uh, in Scala. Does, does anybody know what I'm talking about? I thought it's kind of similar to that. Apparently, it is not. This, is, was, this was just an example of uh, arbitrary expressions. Okay. All right, so I overestimated this language, apparently. It's not as powerful as I thought. So I thought it may be really similar to Scala on apply, but eh, whatever. Uh, okay, let's continue. So, uh, wrong number, type check and automatic cast. Okay, so I already looked into that. When expression ranges, we have ranges, collections, basic classes and their uh, instances. Uh, okay, cool. So I went through the basic syntax and uh, maybe we can take a look at the idioms. Um, mm -hmm. So we have instance checking, read only maps, extension. Oh, this one is cool. This one is cool. Yeah. Extension. So basically, you can take any class, right? So, and. Um, for example, function string. Uh, I don't know. Let's put hello here, right? And I don't remember how will I be able to even access like this or something. Probably this should be available. I think. I think this should be available. So um, maybe we can return. This one could be something like boolean. Uh, and then we can return this equal to hello, right? And then I can do something like println hello, hello. Maybe even let's call it like that. Let's call it slightly differently. Uh, is hello, right? So, and essentially I extended string class, probably. I don't know if this is available. I'm just guessing how it works. Oh, what's up, Lemakota, by the way? Mm. Yeah, a little UFCs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it is working. It is working. Would you, would you look at that? Mm. So that's pretty cool. So I can just extend anything. And here's an interesting thing: uh, singleton. So I suppose, like in Scala, if I remember correctly. Uh, objects like a singleton objects are used to um, implement static methods. Uh, does that mean that Kotlin also has companion objects? You know, so people who program this scale probably know what I'm talking about because you usually have a class, right? You usually have a class uh, foo, right? And you usually have object foo. Right, and these two things, like this particular object, is called companion object. So uh, that means you you can still call f, and it will be called from here. I'm not even sure if this is a correct uh, correct Kotlin syntax, but whatever. Right, uh, you can basically treat it as an object, right, uh, as a as a class or as a static method. So. That means that Kotlin prob sh uh, also probably have uh, companion objects. We can even Google that. Kotlin companion objects. I wonder if they even called like that. Oh, there you go. I yeah, <laughs> they're called companion objects. <laughs> uh, you see, I know Kotlin. Oh, you have to explicitly. 
So they even have like explicit keyword for that. All right. Okay. Sure. But I, I was really close. I think. I think it was really close. Um, okay. For loops. Blah blah blah. Break and continue loops. Okay. Okay. I get. The, I get the gist of this language. I get the gist of it. Uh, classes and object, functions and lambdas, blah blah blah. Uh, core libraries. Let's take a look at the core libraries and the standard library. And maybe we should try to write something, like implement some some small program that actually does something. Um, so Kotlin concurrent. Uh, does it have like a Kotlin system? Yeah, it does have a Kotlin system. Uh, you see how much experience I have in languages, right? So I already know that there is a Kotlin system. Uh, and does it have arguments? No. Anyway, whatever. So I think I, I actually saw enough. Let's try to implement something. Let's try to implement something. First thing I want to implement, I just want to be able to parse command line arguments. It is it is just a Scala clone. I don't know why it exists. It's actually simple Scala. It's it's like a Scala for normies without uh, dank functional programming. That's what, how we would characterize it. Um, so, I suppose it has to be something like this. Uh, if people say args. Okay, let's let's try to compile it. And that means I should be able to do something like this. Uh, will it work? Will it work? Let's find out. Print a arg. And let's just try to compile that. By the way, is it possible to take the command line arguments from the make file and post it? Oh, okay. Uh, expecting comma. All right. Um, <sighs> Kotlin arrays. Mm, basic types arrays. I already forgot, so I quickly look through that okay come on load up load up uh-huh 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 so that means uh array i don't know why i said ours i think i'm an idiot oh it i just was following free foo i see okay so i should not listen to free foo anymore that's basically what it means is it gonna work now mm. There we go, it worked. Uh, and it printed something. Is this what it printed? So these are the argument that we've got. Uh, let me double check that. Uh, so I'm gonna put it like that. And one more time. It takes so long to go. Well, welcome to the JVM world, I suppose, as this is how JVM languages work. There's nothing can, I can do about that. Uh, okay, so we don't have any arguments, but what if we, uh, we add some arguments here? Can I do something like hello world full bar? Will that actually work? It worked. Would you look at that? It actually managed to parse. Oh, it also included this dash dash here. It also included this dash dash. <clears throat> Uh, so that means we don't have to specify this dash dash, so we can just do it like that. And uh, okay, so we already know how to parse command line arguments. Uh, and <clears throat> so we can try to read from a file, right? Kotlin read. Maybe we have something in the library, in the standard library. So do we have file? Yeah, it should be probably something in the Kotlin I.O. Let's take a look at the I.O. API. File tree walk. Uh, so you can just use Java I.O. file. I, I forgot how to read from files to be fair in Java. Uh, is there like a simplified... Uh, okay, you can read line. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we'll probably have to use uh, Java API to read from files, but I forgot how to read from file in Java. So what I'm gonna do is Java read whole file. So what I wanna do, I just wanna read the whole file. Read complete file using Java loop or something. Um, so you have a file reader and as far as I know, in file reader, if I remember correctly, you can just read the whole thing. I think you can just read the whole thing. Um, can you not? Uh, why don't it have s mm, enough? There is also buffer reader. 
Uh, files read all files. Where is it written? Okay, buffer it. Reader. Buffer it reader. Mm. Okay, so this looks useful. This looks useful. So what is this page? Why I couldn't see that... File read read text. Uh-huh. Get the entire content. Okay, this is what we, what I need here. Yeah, this is what I need here. Um, okay, cool. So uh, let's assume that uh, this thing is available in args zero. So what should I should I be able to do? I should be able to create a new file, but I cannot create a new file like that, right? So I have to do somehow this stuff somehow differently. Can I go back? Uh, how do I open a file? Uh, uh, how do I open the file? Read. Uh, how do I open the file? So, files. I don't know. I don't need snippets in the chat. Give me documentation. I don't need snippets in the chat. They're useless usually and don't compile. Uh, if you don't have a link to the actual documentation that, you know, you know, explains how they don't even bother posting in the chat, I'm not going to read that. Um, okay. So that read text thingy, okay, file I already been there. It doesn't have anything useful. It doesn't have anything useful. Uh... Oh, okay, finally. So, Jesus Christ, why is it so hard to find anything like that? Okay, args uh, zero uh, for each file, and then uh, I can read the text. Read the text. Nice. Cool. And now we can print a len. Okay, so that should work. Um, and I wonder, can we check um, that? Can I do something like if args? length uh if args length um less than one right can we throw some some sort of error uh how can i throw an error in kotlin uh or some sort of expression does it have a throw it does have a throw um but we can do something like i don't know print ln uh, uh, not enough arguments provided, right? Not enough arguments provided. Funk Chi! Funk Chi, thank you so much for 18 months! Kathleen on my sub anniversary folk. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much for 18 months of tier 1 subscription and welcome to our epic Coughlin Club! That's right, yep, we're programming in Coughlin. That's what we're doing, programming in Coughlin. Um, all right, so I, I basically want to just, you know, exit uh, violently if you didn't provide any file path because it's kind of, it's kind of, you know, strange. Uh, uh, so, uh, yep, let's see if it's going to compile. Let's see if it's going to compile. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, unresolved length. So maybe it is a function. Maybe it is a function. Let's find out. All right, nice. A Kotlin array. So this is a Kotlin. What is this? Is that an official website? Kotlin for Python developers? What the hell is that? Is does it have like a you know, like a full reference of all of the classes and stuff like that? Seriously? Okay. So where's the reference? I need the reference. Like like in Java, where's the reference? So uh, core libraries standard. This thing is useless. What the fuck is that? Uh, where is the search? Where can I search for a particular class? Where is all of that? Kotlin reference. A Kotlin reference. Where is all of that? How is that a use useful language? Where is it? 
the fuck is this shit? Kotlin Dogs. What is that? I'm mad. I'm mad. Uh, Kotlin latest. Uh, okay. It doesn't open. What the fuck is this shit? What the fuck is that? Okay, finally. Okay, length. How do you do length? Uh, length. Come on. Size. It's size. Cool. Thank you so much. Uh, it's it's even a property. Fucking unusable. All right. Come on. Compile. Compile. I don't have time for these bullshit tutorials. Give me a reference guide and just tell me how the method is called. Okay, cool. So, uh, I probably have to import some shit as well, right? So... Why doesn't it tell me what I have to import? What do I have to import? What do I have to import? It doesn't tell me what I have to import. Where, where is it? Useless. Okay. So, uh... What is that? Uh, Kotlin array, Kotlin is to delip. Um, this is awful. Will this search even work, by the way? Wow, this is the most awful documentation I've ever seen in my entire life. Wow, I'm impressed. Not gonna lie, I'm literally impressed. Uh, okay, so, um, cool. <laughs> uh, so essentially, we need some sort of file like input.txt. Uh, all right, uh, hello. The language is okay. Documentation is fucking horrible. It's fucking trash. Uh, okay, so we're gonna put an input txt here. Um, oh, there we go. So we managed to actually open this entire thing, right? Uh, and uh, print the file, which is which is okay, I would say. Which is okay. Mm. Uh, so. What's what could be the next thing that we could do? Mm, what the fuck? It's like a hello world. How does it take so long to compile? Welcome to JVM languages. So, <laughs> um, um, I'm not even using IDE, but maybe it, it could be that my uh, laptop is very slow. So it could be that. Um, I don't know. All right. So uh, here's the reference. Learn Kotlin. Oh, this this documentation really demotivates me. By the way, it really demotivates me. It's hard to find anything. Okay, string tutorials. It really demotivates me. I don't need tutorial. Could you give, give me the reference guide? But Zoisin, just use ID. Ah, ah, ah. Um, okay, so. Oh, shit. All right, so I can go here. But now I want to go back and just see. Can I take a string and split it by, for example, lines? And it also takes so much time to load up. <sighs> okay. Okay, I can take lines. Nice, nice, nice. So, uh, essentially what I can do now, all right, I can read text, uh, lines, and I can try to iterate lines. Um, 
So uh, maybe we can even do the following thing. Um, lines. So what is lines? Lines is a function and then I can take size of it. Right. Uh, line count. Right. Line count. Uh, there we go. And what did we create? Did we create a, um, a program that counts lines? Did we create a program that counts lines? Did we even manage to do that? Yes, we did. So there's there are five uh, lines in the input, and uh, it's not really necessarily true. Well, a one line is empty, right? So if I change it like that, it still says five because it automatically adds. Okay, but I mean, fair enough, I suppose. Fair enough. So. Fair enough. Uh, how do you like Kotlin so far? Horrible. Uh, first of all, it's a JVM language that takes ages to compile. Second of all, documentation is completely fucking unusable. I hate it. So, um, let's implement something more interesting. Um, so, something that will actually force me to use maybe classes, like structures or something, something like that. Uh, let's implement like a small scripting language. Hmm? Sounds good. Sounds interesting. Like a small scripting language could be could be interesting. Uh, so that will probably force me to create like algebraic data types and whatnot. Uh, yeah, let's do that. But before we're gonna do that, uh, I think I'll need to make a cup of tea. Mm. Implementing Lisp in Coquelin. We could try to implement Lisp, like a very simple Lisp in Coquelin, why not? Um, we can implement a very simple one. So, yeah, basically we can try to parse uh, S expressions. We can try to parse S expressions. And then maybe interpret those as expressions. Yeah. I'm gonna go quickly uh, put up some water. So, yeah. Just quickly turn on my kettle. Yo, what's up? <clears throat> mm. Okay. Um, how do you do algebraic data types in Kotlin? So it's probably going to be similar uh, to how you do them in Scala. Right. Yeah, sealed classes. Uh, this is exactly what they said. Similar to how we do that in, in Scala. <sighs> Are you fucking serious? Not a single snippet of code? For fuck's sake, people. Medium, by the way. Finally, it was loading up. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what is out. What is out? It's probably some pretentious bullshit, but we'll see. Okay, so uh, we're gonna have a sealed class. A sealed, I suppose it's like a final class, if I remember correctly. What's well, that? It's not really a final class. Basically, you cannot inherit it in other modules or whatnot, right? So it's uh, th that's what it means. 
Um, and what we're going to have here, we're going to have S expression, right? So this is going to be S expression. Uh, and I'm not really sure if I need to do it like that, but yeah. Okay, and after that, uh, I can make a data class, right? It's going to be a data class. Um, all right, and what is it going to be? So I suppose um, it could be, first of all, nil, um, right? Uh, nil for s expression, right? Then data class for uh, cons, right? And that particular class will take uh, head as an s expression, right? It's going to be head as an s expression, and the tail um, other s expression, yeah. So maybe we can call it first and second, right? I think it will make a little bit more sense. Um, Mm, okay, so, and I suppose we will also need some symbols, right? We will also need some symbols, and the symbol is going to be simply, um, you know, this thing. All right, and let's uh, see if it's going to even compile. Let's see if it's going to even compile. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, data class must have at least one primary constructor parameter. Really? Are you sure about that? Why not? Why not? Why not allow data classes without any, uh, you know, con like parameters? <gasps> Constructor parameter. Can I, can I do something like this? Because I don't see why not. Why not allowed? You usually use object for that. Ah, so that means can I do data object new then? Is, is, wait, did it work? Wait, 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 wait. I, I, think, I think it worked. I, at least I felt like it worked. But I'm not sure. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it didn't work, but if we try to do the object, do the object. You guys are trying to be clever about, you know, saying data is, has to contain data. But keep in mind that in programming, we have a notion of immutable variables. Uh, so I'm going to uh, pour something. Uh, all right all right so what do we have it still doesn't work well i mean we can work around that and essentially uh this could be just new uh, if it wants to have at least one parameter we can give it one parameter why not why not i'm totally okay with that so, okay, illegal uh, will be denied in the future release. Oh, what am I reading? <laughs> uh, must have only one. Okay, so they have to be like val, right? Uh... Uh -huh. So let's actually, let's do it like that, I suppose. Mm -hmm. This is gonna compile. We're about to find out. We're about to find out. 
All right, so this uh, tab has a constructor and those must be initialized here. So I suppose there's some problem with using sealed class maybe. Uh, uh. That's a very helpful error message by the way. This type constructor has this type has a type uh, constructor and those must be initialized here. Ooh, that's a very helpful tutorial. Just add ah, you basically have to call it. Can I even use interface here? Okay, so it worked. Interface. Okay, so apparently you can even have interface here. So, and if it's gonna be interface, I don't have to call this constructor anymore. Right, that's probably what's gonna happen. <sighs> so far, user experience seems nice. Well, this is because I don't use any IDEs. Ah, ah, Zuzin, why are you being so stupid and don't use any IDEs? Ah, ah. That's basically why. Um. I have to go and still need to get a lot of stuff done. I'm sorry you hate Kotlin after I shield it so hard. Uh, well, I mean, don't worry about it. It's, this is pretty much what I expected from a JVM language, so... Uh, it's okay, I just don't like JVM languages. Uh, see you around, function. Mm -hmm. Just keep in mind that I hate all of the languages equally. All right, cool. Mm. <laughs> so, and Forming some sort of a, like a structure out of that is going to be a whole new journey. I'm pretty sure about that. Pretty sure it's going to be the whole uh, journey. So let's give it a try. So how are we going to try to do that? I wonder if in this class I can have uh, some sort of a method. By the way, sealed interface didn't work. Uh, did anyone notice how it didn't work? Um, and what exactly I, di I did wrong here? I don't even know what exactly I did wrong here. But it simply didn't work. Uh, Alright. This class doesn't have a constructor. Okay, so I remember that I had to remove that. And it still didn't work. I wish the compilation times were a little bit faster because uh, like wild compiles I completely lose track of what I was thinking about and it just messes up my development cycle so hard. Uh, sealed is not applicable to interface. Okay, so that interface doesn't have to be uh, sealed, right? So it doesn't have to be sealed. Try scala. Dude! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try scala. Imagine telling me to try Scala, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> uh, welcome to Zodjing stream, I suppose. Zosin, you should try Haskell. Have you heard about this language called Haskell? Try Haskell. Have you heard about it? Oh my god, it's such a cool language, you will like it. I'm pretty sure you never tried it. Uh, what the fuck are this warning? I don't know. Um, so, Kotlin interfaces. Um, I want to see how you define methods in the interfaces. Okay. So, can I do something like... Uh, can you do to string? Um, what's called print? 
Yeah, let's call it print. So this is going to be a method print. And then I suppose to... Uh, does it have overwrite? Oh shit, it does have overwrite. I wonder if you can put it like in front of it. And uh, if I put it like that, in the cons... Um, what are we going to do? We have to print... Uh... <sighs> the thing is... I definitely need to just overwrite to string, but to string is a part of an object, right? So that means I don't have to do that. So yeah, I don't have to do that. Mm, so I'm gonna try to overwrite, overwrite to string. Fun. And essentially, how we're gonna do that is oh, by the way, it's expression based, so that means I don't have to do return. That's cool. So it's gonna be like this, then it's gonna be like first to string, second to string, uh, dot, uh, I, I did a fucky wacky, excuse me, uh, and then it's gonna be just that. Uh, so this is uh, to string of the, uh, of the cons, and then uh, we can try to do something like this, overwrite fun to string. And I'm going to just return the name of it. So this is how we're going to convert S expressions to the strings. All right. And uh, after that, uh, maybe I don't want to remove that line because it's going to be useful in the future because we're going to read all of that from file because we're going to try to parse all of that. Uh, and uh, if I define something like cons1... Uh, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has to be a symbol. It has to be a symbol. Symbol then cons um, symbol bar and uh, cons um, maybe it could be yeah symbol buzz and then you can do to string and then you can print it there we go so this is how we can do that all right uh, so so this is a simple s expression very simple as expression and we should be able to print it hopefully we'll see how it goes mm. so public open function defined return type of string is not subtype of return mm. Ah, I see. I forgot to specify the return type at all. That makes sense. Mm, return expression required. Okay, let's put return. I thought it's expression based. Apparently it is not expression based. Mm, apparently it is not expression based. Cool. Mm, now it works. Would you look at that? Mm, mm, mm. Eat that back scissors. Everything works. Uh, you're just mad because you're bad. So we have uh, as expressions, but we also need to be able to print, uh, you know, the um, the lists, right? Because uh, if uh, not everybody knows that, but um, if you have this pattern, so we have pairs uh, like this, uh, it should be actually printed like this: one, uh, two, three, right? And we need to be able to print that somehow. Right, we need to be able to print that somehow, and that could be kind of complicated. That could be kind of complicated, so maybe we can uh, implement the printer. So, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Does uh, Who knows uh, S expressions in the chat, by the way? Who knows uh, expression in the chat? Uh, S expressions in the chat? Okay, so uh, implementing printer like that is actually quite simple, but uh, implementing something like this can take a little bit more effort. And it would be really great if we had like a new 
as a special thing here. That will be absolutely fucking great. But unfortunately, the, the language is too pepega. You can do it like that. And, uh, well, apparently even object doesn't work. But that will be so great. That will be so great. It's like a special thing. It's, I, I really want to have that, like, but can we do something like this? Can, can you, like, have us as a unit? Is that a thing you can do? Let's see. Object need, I don't remember, but I think object didn't really work. Object without data. Mm, okay, maybe, maybe that will work. Let's see. It's too many keywords. I think it's way too many keywords for what, what we're trying to achieve here, right? You know, for example, in Haskell, it's way simpler. Like it, you don't need any special keywords for just doing these kind of things. I think the language is overcomplicated. It's not that great. The design is not that great. Not, not a big fan. And of course, you don't need this constructor, of course. So let's try to compile. Experiment is what, what you can do is painful with this com exactly like I don't know how like people use this. It's just painful It's just painful But apparently a lot of people are okay with that. So, okay So we do have nil which is kind of great and we can use that as an indicator of the end of the list So uh, let me try to do that. So this one is gonna become cons and this one is going to become new. So hopefully that will turn into list. Oh, by the way, we don't even have a two-string situation over here. Um, uh, two-string, string. And uh, we're just going to call it new. So this is basically what it's going to be. So let's see. Mm -mm. You think I never tried Win API? <laughs> Jesus Christ, people. You you all must be new here, if you really think so. <laughs> Imagine thinking I never tried Win API. Um, New friends, am I right? Uh, so let's actually try to do something here. Um, yeah. So we need a special printer. As I already said, we need to print it like that. Uh, we need to print it like that. Mm. <sighs> so when you're trying to print the cones, right? This one is going to be kind of sophisticated. I'm just thinking if I can... Does Kotlin have string builders? String builder. I mean, if it doesn't, I can just use uh, the one from the Java, right? Because uh, Kotlin has a Java interrupt. Mm -hmm. So I can append different things. Yeah, basically that's what I want. Um, so I suppose um, I probably have to do it var. But maybe val is going to be okay. Val does not imply that the, the object is going to be immutable, right? So, uh, probably. Mm, build string or Java's build string. I don't know. I just googled up and this is what I got from the Google, right? I trust Google more than I trust chat because chat always tries to debate me. So, this is what I got from the Google. It shows me that I have to use this thing. So, I'm just using this thing. I'm sorry. I don't know what this build string curly whatever the fuck it is. Sorry. I'm just following the Google. Um, but I can check whether it's uh, here. No, there's no such thing here. I'm sorry. It is what it is. Um, mm -hmm. Appendable. I wish there was like an example for string builder because I didn't uh, yeah, concatenate strings in Kotlin. Mm hmm. Mm. 
Okay, that, that's cool. So this is gonna be result string builder. And you can just append shit there. Okay, that's that's actually beautiful. That's actually beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna append this thing like that. There we go. And um, huh. How do you do destructuring? Destructuring. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. So we can do that in chipples. With editing, instruction in one. Okay. Okay, so you can do that. In parametric, you can match against... So if we had data class, uh, we could do... In Scala, if you use... Little, but can you do that? Is that a thing? Okay. When object is... Okay, when object is that... Uh, then I can... Okay, okay, so that means I can... Uh, I think I understand what I can do here. I think I understand. So... Um, um let me see let me see uh i want to also keep the current i think it has to be uh a current it is a proposal this is a proposal ah it's just a proposal god damn it but i mean the basic idea will still work right well, the basic idea is, is still work i can still check that something of a particular class right something of a particular class um so that doesn't really matter while um current is cons so i'm pretty sure this will work right so while current is cons um and i know for sure that it is a cons um i can just do result append current uh we're reading the proposal okay cool i was reading a proposal but is it correct that I can just do something like this? Whatever. Okay, it's a proposal. But e like the is keyword still works, right? Regardless of this thing being a proposal or not. So, it doesn't matter. So the fact that it was proposal is completely irrelevant to what I'm doing. Agree? Right? Cool. Let's continue. Uh, so, to string. Result append. And, yeah. This one is going to be interesting. Um, if current second is, for example, new. And I wonder if I can easily do that. I think it should it should work. If it's nil, um, uh, we just have to append this thing here. Uh, and after that, mm -hmm, mm, the current is going to be equal current second. So essentially what we're doing here, we're iterating the linked list, right? So we're iterating the linked list. Um, yeah. And after that, if current is... So I remember that you can do something like this, not is. Yeah, yeah, yeah not is. Uh-huh, not is uh, nil, right? What I can do here is result 
uh, append current to string, actually it has to be result uh, append uh, something like this, this, and then uh, only then we can just close this entire thing. There we go. So and after that we should be able to just take the result and to string. See, you see what I'm talking about? Does anybody follow what I'm doing right now? Right? Or everybody is just talking about like some bike shading stuff, like sealed interfaces and proposals or something. Does anybody know how to iterate a linked list here? Or everyone can only bike shed. Um, let's see if it compiles. I'm not sure if it's gonna compile, but yeah. So mismatch inferred type, is, but cons was expected. Oh, that's cool. So can I say, for example, that I expect this thing to be S expression? It worked, but the only thing I forgot is to add spaces. So every time we append a new thing here, right, uh, we want to also separate them with spaces. Um, but that could be a little bit difficult, but maybe, maybe that's okay. There we go. So there is a little bit of artifact here. Uh, there's a little bit of artifact here, but what's funny is that if you have uh, a situation where you don't have a nil, it will take that into account as well. It will take that into account as well. Mm -hmm. You see? That's pretty cool. Um, so maybe it makes sense for me to um, upload that somewhere, right? So if uh, people want to follow that, I don't know, if anyone want to follow that. And I wonder if I can easily get rid of this dot here, I mean space here, so I can have A, B and C. So yeah, essentially first one shouldn't have anything like that. Uh, why Java compile so slow? Ask Java developers. I'm not a Java developer. First, false. Uh, first, if first, if not first, uh, okay, if first. Uh, First, become false, otherwise, false. Is it gonna get rid of the space? Is, is it gonna get rid of the space? Let's find out. Uh, maybe I forgot to, to maybe it, it requires this parenthesis. You see, one mistake and you have to wait for the compilation yet again. One mistake and you've mistaken. Ah, there we go, it works. And uh, also let's try to do something like cons and also put nil and that means the thing is gonna be like that. Just don't make a mistake. Good one, good one. All right, so as you can see, it seems to be working. It seems to be twerking. Uh, so maybe we should actually uh, submit that somewhere. Uh, I need to create the repo uh, and upload it and whatnot. So yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a good idea. Let's, let's quickly do that. So uh, it's gonna be Zosin, uh, Coquelin, Coquelin, Sexper, Sexper. There we go. So this is going to be Coquelin Sexper. And I'm going to copy paste this entire thing here. Uh, and it's going to be a very simple thing. Yeah. Right now, uh, maybe it also makes sense to create some input. It's going to be one, two, three, four. 
yep. And uh, maybe we're also gonna add some readme. Uh, Coquelin, Coquelin S expressions. Um, just a small playground to try Kotlin out. Um, so, and I'm gonna also refer to the official website of Kotlin. Uh, this is not what I want in Google. That. Uh, yeah, so this is what I want is. So we also want to provide quick start, quick start. Um, um, the make file expects expects Kotlin C being available in uh, the in the path in the path. And uh, so essentially, what you have to do, you just have to run make run and that's it believe it or not so this is how simple the build is no gradle no dependency or anything you just have to have kotlin c in your path uh, variable and you just run make run and it will work and it will automatically compile everything and it will automatically run everything so yeah simple as that why software is not developed as simple as this uh, these days? I don't know. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, but we'll have to actually update our environment a little bit, I think. Um, let me do a, like a pro gamer move. Let me do a pro gamer move. Uh, I'm going to move the Kotlin C, right? The Kotlin C to my OPT folder, right? So it's going to become like a part of my installation. Uh, so it's going to be like that, and I'm going to do here, and let's go to OPT. So here I keep like everything, like additional third-party dependencies. Uh, home, Rexim, third-party, it wasn't actually not third-party, it was actually Probe, and uh, it was Kotlin, was it Kotlin? Yeah, it was Kotlin, Kotlin C. Uh, let's actually co uh, copy Kotlin compiler. Can I? It's it's like this. All right. There we go. Cool. And then I'm gonna do unzip uh, Kotlin compiler. All right. And then I'm gonna copy Java environment into Kotlin uh, environment. All right. It's gonna be sh. And let's update it slightly. Uh, so we don't need to set Java home, but we do need to set a special environment stuff. It's going to be OPT. Uh, wait a second. Uh, I think it's Kotlin C uh, bin, and that should be it, I think. Yeah, and if I take a look inside of the Kotlin C, please Kotlin C folder, please Kotlin... Okay, that, yeah, so it seems to be working. Okay, so this is going to be my special special environment thingy. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, all right, I'm going to close everything. So my in environment finally is reproducible. So, and I'm going to try to create a repo out of that. So Kotlin S expressions. So git init, uh, and I'm going to make a commit. I'm going to quickly make a commit. Um, ready, set, go. All right, and uh, let's create a separate branch and a se separate repo. Let's create a repo. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Coquelin Sexper. Coquelin Sexper. Uh huh. I wonder if uh, Markdown works in descriptions. I don't really know. Let's actually find out. Does anybody know? That's very interesting. Yeah, you cannot see the description unless you push something. Nice GitHub, but, but you can actually see it in the list of all of the repos, I think. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't work. But it does parse links and automatically highlights them. How does that make any sense? 
yeah, look at that. Like, Markdown doesn't work, but it does parse links in. Well, no, good job, GitHub. Good job. Cheers, by the way. Um, all right. So let's actually uh, try to, to push something there. Um, so we'll have to add the origin remote and uh, a little bit like this. Yeah, sounds like a good idea, actually. <laughs> let's just leave it like this. Uh, yeah, let's push it. Okay, so... Um, here it is. You can find the source code of the thing I'm developing here if you want to. So I'm just trying Kotlin out. Like I never programmed in this language, um, but yeah. Uh, so I'm just trying it out. Maybe it makes sense to update my project. Bitkalash, welcome to the stream. Oh, wait a second. Is the bot dead? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize that that was the output of them. Okay. So update CMD project, uh, trying. Kotlin programming language. Maybe it, well, maybe we're gonna say trying out. I think that's a better English right there. Source code is gonna be available there. If anyone cares, there it is. So yep. Okay, cool. So let's go there. Mm, any plans for Advent of Code? I don't know. Advent of Code sounds like a pretty huge commitment for me, to be fair. Um, okay, so where is this thing? It's Coquelin, Coquelin Sexper. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to enable uh, this thing and then Kotlin, uh, Kotlin environment. Oh boy, okay, Kotlin C. Is it available? Yes, it is available. So I have a reproducible environment. Anaboth, welcome. Welcome, Anaboth, to the stream. How are you doing? So we can just quit. Uh, yeah, you have to type quit <laughs> completely. Uh, is it quitting? Is that accept what? Oh, okay. Okay. So, all right. I'm not going to question that. Okay, sure. Uh, let's try to to, to run this. Um, whatever. I don't know what these warnings are. Something with my GDK. It's something with my GDK and I don't know. Okay, so we have full bar buzz. Makes sense. Uh, makes sense. Cool. Mm, so now uh, we know how to uh, print as expressions, right? We know how to print them. Uh, now we need to know how to parse them. And this is the most interesting part. We need to know how to parse them. And maybe to parse them, we need to separate them into tokens, right? And then tokenize them and whatnot. <clears throat> uh, maybe tokenize them. So, uh, yeah, let's actually create like a similar thing with uh, like interface and uh, DTO and, what, uh, and whatnot. Right. So it's going to be interface uh, token, right? And we're going to have several tokens here. So in, in S expressions, we usually have... Um, I suppose we have one, two, three, four kinds of tokens, right? So open parent, close parent, uh, dot and the symbol, right? So dot and the symbol. Mm, so then we're gonna do class, uh, data class and uh, open parent. So this is gonna be the thing. Uh, oh, and it has to be object. Yes, it has to be object. There we go. Uh, token. Mm. Oh, wait a second. 
Can you have enumerations in... But no, we don't really want to have enumerations in Kotlin. Close parent. So, uh, object dot, right, so it's going to be token. Is that like idiomatic, <laughs> idiomatic Kotlin? I actually doubt that. Kotlin in nums. Uh, so there are num classes, but I'm not sure if a num classes can hold any. Yeah, they're closer to Java enumerations. This is not really what I want. This is not really what I want. But yeah. I mean, in that case, we could try to, like, have an enumeration, enumeration class. Yeah, yeah, so let's actually have an enumeration class. So, it's going to be a token, uh, right, it's going to be token type, rather. So, and what kind of token types we want to have there? Uh, open uh, parin, right. And when you access them, how do you access them? Yeah, you access them directly. Uh... In num class. Yeah, it has to be in num class. So you can also have constructors and shit. Open pair close parent dot dot and symbol. Yeah. So this is just a type of a token, uh, but we need to have like a class token, right? Just a class token. And it could be a data class, by the way, because why not? Right, so it could be a data class, so it will contain type, token type and uh, text string there we go so and uh, yeah we essentially need the function right uh, tokenize fun tokenize that accepts input as a string and returns you a list of a uh, list of tokens and i'm not sure if it's the correct way of doing that but i think that's how you would do that right so we can try to essentially just return list of nothing and uh, see if it compiles or not. So we're implementing a tokenizer. All right, so that didn't really work. Uh, maybe because I need to run my Emacs from within the development environment so I can have an access to the Kotlin. And let's see if it's gonna compile or not. All right, so, and it compiled, apparently. That's a good way of doing this. That's a pretty cool way of doing this. Um, so we just need to implement all of that then. Um, I'm just thinking, is there something like a list builder, right? Where like I can just go through this input uh, turn it into tokens and then push it into the uh, result list or something like that um, Okay, let me let me close all of these uh, uh, tabs. We have to, way too many tabs Kotlin list builder is there a such thing build list, okay, so what's up with build list? This sounds interesting uh, Okay uh-huh that could be actually it so i can put like any code here i can have four loops here i can do pretty much anything here i like that wait a second this is actually such a cool idiom build list right so we can do something like this and then you can just add some shit like token uh open pattern like this uh, you can add a bunch of these things, like close parent um, dot symbol, right? Uh, and of course, you don't need any semicolons, so you can just do it like that. And then, essentially, I can tokenize, uh, tokenize whatever. And can I print this entire thing just to see if, I, if I'll see uh, any tokens? Uh, hello, Walking 70. Yeah, I'm just playing with Kotlin, nothing special. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to get the gist of the language because I never programmed in that language. And specifically to get the gist of that language, I am implementing S expression parser and S expression uh, printer. So, and maybe with the, uh, with S expression support, we can implement a simple Lisp or, uh, or interpreted language. 
Okay, build list. This declaration is experimental and its usage must be marked uh, with Kotlin experimental std lib API or opt-in. Okay, cool. Uh, but how do I do that? Uh, how, how do I opt in? So do I have to put this thing here? Like here? Is it gonna work? Uh, I don't know how to opt in into the experimental features. Uh, because they didn't uh, show me an example here. Um, so I don't know how to do that. Um, yeah, so uh, unresolved reference open parent. Okay, that's interesting. Do I have to access this thing like that? Do I have to prefix them with token type? Uh, token type. Let's see. Mm. Okay, finally it worked. Uh, this class can only be used uh, with the compiler argument x opt opt in. <sighs> But it worked. I mean, sure, but it worked. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we can add this flag here. Uh, I don't mind adding it there. So let's quickly do that. Uh, uh, maybe if we, I, I want to rebuild everything from scratch just to see the compilation errors and stuff. All right, seems good. So uh, that means we can use this idiom to, uh, you know, tokenize the input, which is actually kind of cool. Um, so I know that in uh, Java, all right, let, let me make a small break. I, I really need to make a small break. So, and after small break, like uh, two minutes or even maybe less. Maybe even less. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue. All right, let's make a small break and you guys have fun.
Hey yo, I'm back to back champion of the arena. Uh, all right. So uh, first thing I want to do, I want to be able to trim the string, Kotlin trim string, right? Because I need to remove any uh, leading leading white spaces. So that's essentially what I want to do. Uh, so you can have a character sequence and you can just trim it. But can you trim only begin? Uh, okay, return subsequence of the character we have in leading and trailing. Okay, leading. Okay, how can I do only leading? It trims all of them. This is actually quite kind of bad. But maybe we can work with that. Maybe that's going to be okay for our case. Anyway, so if you have something like this, right, and then you can trim it. Uh, it's going to take some time while it's compiling because it's Kotlin, uh, right? Um, yeah, 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 so uh, function trim invocation, but it's uh, part of a character sequence. Do I have to import something? Do I have to import Kotlin uh, text like this? Is it going to work? And then can I try to do something like this? Uh, oh, function invocation. Okay, I'm an idiot. All right, right. So, uh, and if I do something like test, yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe removing, uh, you know, spaces from both of the sides is going to be okay. But I would prefer to not do that. Uh, it's kind of strange, but all right. But, oh, it's it's a specifically trim. Uh, yeah, yeah. So maybe we can find trim leading. Uh, uh, please be faster. It's unbearable. Uh, okay, so apparently we have a trim start, which is kind of cool. So, uh, start. Cool. Uh, and um, do we have sub string? Uh, how do you do sub string? Slice. Returns a character sequence containing. Aha. Uh -huh. Split. While. Take last while. Take while oh shit we have everything we need oh my god that's perfect all right um okay so essentially what we're doing input input trim start so first we're trimming it actually we need to do something like this while input uh can you can you do something like is empty is empty okay while is not empty right we're trimming the input, right? And we're checking the first character. Um, actually, yeah, I think we do. We have to do it like that. So first we're trimming it, and then we check if it's not empty. So here it's not going to be empty 100%. So, and um, can I have something like... Like when... So, uh, uh, hello. Okay, I can do that. So, input zero. So, and I know that it's going to work because it's not empty. We check that in while. Right. And I can, can I do things like that? So, uh, I still don't, don't fully understand how when works. When is really weird. Um, it's really weird. I don't understand how it works. It's neither power matching, no switch, no, like it, how do it work? Uh, okay, so you can have expressions there. You can also have, uh, yeah, it's it's really strange. Um, okay, so that means I can do something like this, and uh, if it's that, uh, I can uh, add token um, open parent uh, open parent, and then the text has to be this thing. Right, do I have to have any... Okay, I don't have to uh, have any separation. Uh, uh, when is just fancy if? More like a scuffed powder matching. Fancy if. <laughs> fancy if is just giving too much credit to this shit, to be fair. Uh, okay, so... And... So another one is gonna be dot. So, and the last one, it has to be, let's actually say, uh, like alphanumeric. Is it possible to take a character and say, is alpha? Okay. Uh, it doesn't have anything, so... 
<sighs> okay. Kotlin char is alpha. Is it possible to check something? You can do is letter. Okay, so the code is letter. Sure. But what about is alphanumeric? Is that a thing you can do? Uh, okay. Is letter. Is letter or digit? Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> yeah, instead of is alpha num, they call it is letter or digit. Thank you. Uh, but. I cannot call call it like that, but I suppose I can try to do something like this. Like, is it possible to have this kind of syntax? Is letter or digit? Is that a thing you can do here, or not? <sighs> so we can have. Okay, when can also be used as a replacement? Okay. I see. So, um, uh, else, else, nice one. Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess this one is gonna be okay like that. Um, so, and uh, now, hello. Uh, I think I need a special function that would check me whether this thing is you know something special right so one of these special characters so is special right and uh it will accept the character uh i suppose it has to be like that and will return boolean right and then it's gonna be x this or x um i could do something like this okay so uh if i have these things and then I do index of uh, X I think I can do something like that so essentially I can group all of the special characters like this and uh, index of X uh, return greater or equal than zero so this is how I can approach that yes this is the easiest way to approach that um, <clears throat> okay cool uh, and essentially now I want to take the input and take while uh, x uh, is special not well x is not special and x is not space and I'm not even sure if uh, characters do have something like that yeah there, there is no is space is space so where is all of that so um is it called white's blank white space returns true if the character sequence is not empty and contains some character except white spaces no i need a not character sequence but okay they call it white space right is white space there we go so it's not special and not white space. And what's interesting is that I think we can make it an extension method. Yeah, I think we can make it an extension method. So I can do something like char um, is special, right? So, and then I can do something like this. And after that, I shouldn't be able to do it like that. I can just have like more universal function call. Yeah, so because you can have extension methods in Kotlin. Uh, I wonder if it's, it's gonna compile though. I wonder if it's gonna compile. All right. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it just takes while it's that. We can even test it out here. So imagine that we have something like hello world, and um, I'm going to take while. All right. Is uh, white space not white space? There we go. Okay, so, and on top of that, we need to also drop while. Right, do we even have drop while? Do we have drop while? Oh shit, I lost it. Uh, let me see. Um, this is the worst triple I've ever seen. It doesn't work. So when I press D, read line library should delete only take while because that's the word. When I press D here, it deletes, deletes shit ton of stuff. 
This is unacceptable. This is horrible. <sighs> this one's okay. Why do you have to deal with this shit all the time? Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, so drop while also works. Cool. Um, can I take this, like, function? Um, I think I can. Fun um, drop while is symbol. So it's gonna be, like, character. Uh huh. And I can just return that. And what's cool here is that. Right. So this will become the new token that we want to add. Right. This becomes the new token that we want to add. Um, <clears throat> token symbol. Like this. Drop while is symbol. And. Uh, token symbol. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we just added this token here. Uh, can you drop uh, like a fixed amount of characters here? Is that a thing you can do? Oh shit, you can. Okay, nice, 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 nice. Um, so, and here we can do a very similar thing. I can probably uh, do something like this. Uh -huh. Oh shit, my Emacs doesn't really allow me to easily. Why it doesn't indent Emacs? Are you okay, Emacs? Uh, Alright, so that's really strange. But essentially what I want to do here is input equals input. And I suppose to, to have input as a variable, I have to do var, right? I have to do var. And it has to be like drop one. And I have to repeat that like everywhere here. But I didn't think it's a, that great of an idea. I have an idea, I have a better idea actually. So uh, let me go back. So I suppose, oh my God, I, I experimented too much. Okay. I suppose this entire thing is expression based. So can when be a whole expression? If it can, this is gonna be super pog. I'm telling you, it's gonna be super pog. Uh, yeah, so essentially this entire thing will return you some sort of expression, uh, right, and uh, you can do something like token, right, so after that you can add that token to the list and then do something like input, input equal drop uh, token length, token text length, there we go, so yeah, yeah, yeah. so if, if that compiles, that would be actually pretty cool, so something like that would compile in Rust, but it's the Kotlin we're talking about. I don't really know anything about Kotlin. Uh, so yeah, essentially, we, first we figure out token. And once we figure out the token, we know how much we have to remove from the input. Makes sense. Couldn't choose programmer. I couldn't be bothered, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So what, what do we have here? Uh, so this thing has to be var. I wish the compilation times were faster. Uh, by the way, one of the things I wanted to check, uh, Kotlin help. And it's not, just to tell me that this flag doesn't exist. Okay. Okay. Uh, watch. It doesn't even have a watch mode. Sad. Really, really sad. Absolutely fucking sad. Um, all right. <clears throat> so, by the way, what I was talking about? What I was talking about? Uh, it was talking about var on function is not allowed. Okay, so maybe we can just do something like this. And then I can do, um, maybe, yeah, it could be something like var, var s trim start. And then once we dropped it, like once we drop that, I also want to trim it, trim start. Yeah, there we go. That would be actually the thing. Mm. Do 
by the way, just as a disclaimer, I don't really hate Kotlin. Just for those people who got upset. Like, I've seen languages with more bullshit than that, so don't even worry about that. Uh, okay, so uh, type. Uh, token. The token type. What's the difference between var and well? Uh, yeah, mutable versus immutable. Look at those compilation times. We have so much time to talk, right? Uh, okay, so maybe I just have to go through all of these things. Uh, infer type is boolean, but unit was expected. Ah, okay. Boolean, okay. Another one. Uh, so unresolved symbol, uh, it's a token type. So did we go through all of these things? Uh, okay, so I think we are ready to try to recap out. No one is programming code like that. Well, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the Sonic channel. I never compiled the Kotlin program to see if it's correct. Do you even program in Kotlin? Maybe you never compiled the Kotlin program because you never program in it. <laughs> Maybe that's the reason. Uh, function invocation is expected. Oh, okay. So you cannot just use functions as first class citizens. Okay, so maybe this that's what you have to do like do it like that, right? Normally. Right? So I'll assume. Have you ever tried closure? Yes. I think I liked closure less than I like Kotlin. Uh I to be fair, like it's just JVM is such a junky ecosystem that nah, couldn't be bothered. Sorry. Uh, unresolved reference. Okay, so we have a token. And in the token... So can I access the inner things here? Is it even possible to access these inner things? Or are they private? Um, because the text is supposed to be a string. And in a string, as far as I know, I can take a length of it. Right, so what's wrong here? Does anybody know? Deep recursive function. Oh shit. What is deep recursive function? Don't understand. So, okay, can I just do something like I, I'm gonna say I expect this thing to be token. Alright. Length is not a function. Ah. Okay, thank you. That's actually pretty cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Length is a is a, it's a property, right? So it's a property. Scala Z or Scala Cats for Epic FP. I haven't programmed Scala for quite some time already, to be fair. But, you know, maybe I'm going to get back to it at some point. I don't know. Would you look at that? It worked. And I think our tokenizer finally works. So now what we can try to do... Oh yeah, it actually worked. It gave us a sequence like symbol whatever. I think it worked. So th that means I can just do the following thing. I could do one, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five. So, and what that thing should give me is the sequence of tokens, like properly, uh, properly uh, parsed tokens. No, yeah, it worked. So essentially, uh, here's the input. Here was the input. And this is the tokens we've got. We, talk, uh, we got the token open parent. Then uh, another one we've got is one. The next one is two, as you can see them, three, uh, four, and so on and so forth. So as you can see, we managed to tokenize this input properly. We might as well actually uh, do that from a file right so we have a read file then after that can i extend to be fair extension methods are so goddamn addictive <laughs> uh... what stand for my i don't know it's just some sort of like a no name stand so uh 
This is how it looks like. I don't know the brand. I just bought something uh, on the uh, not on the internet, but um, in a in a store. I think it has to be like a char sequence. Uh, char sequence. Yeah, it's a char sequence. And uh, so after reading this, and I think I could tokenize. Shit, I really like the extension methods. <laughs> That's a cool idea. Um, Did it parse the uh, twice? No, I didn't think so. I know which one it is. Oh, you're welcome. Cool. Can you tell me which one it is? Because <laughs> I don't know which one it is. Uh, all right, so trim start. Uh, define in Kotlin text. Define in Kotlin text. And resolve reference none. I'm confused, chat. What the hell is going on? Is it because this, in this context, does not refer to what I think it refers? I think that's the problem. So, uh, let me try something. S, this. And then I'm gonna try to some, do something like this. Sound King D050. Yeah, probably. But it was super cheap. Like, it's just, I don't know. I don't remember how much it costed. This declaration experimental. Ah, yeah. Yeah, it refers. This, I, I actually figured. I actually figured. That's why I actually moved it uh, outside of the uh, outside of the thingy. So. I don't even know how can you make this kind of DSLs. So I suppose this thing acts like a lambda, or maybe there are like first class blocks in, in Kotlin. Uh, all right, so we have input, and for type is, uh, but a string was expected. Okay, can we just make it string then? Because why not? Can we just make it a string? First class blocks. As far as I know, Perl has first class blocks, so. Ah, oh, there we go. It works, and it reads that from the uh, from the input. Uh, so we need some sort of like um, I don't know, maybe some actual Lisp uh, that we can evaluate at some point. Uh, let's make it like plus, right? And this is going to be a multiplication to like one by two, and this is going to be like that. Right, and we can maybe put it like that. So, and it, it has to be actually like this, I think. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit better. Cool. So uh, plus, I think it. I think it did. It did everything correctly. I think it did everything correctly. So the next step, chat, the next step is to take this list of tokens and turn it into S expression. So that's going to be the next step. So this was tokenized, and now uh, we're going to have parse. So parse will accept the list of tokens. Right. It will accept the list of tokens, and it will return a single s expression uh, like this there we go. single s expression uh, so how are we gonna approach all of that uh, to be fair uh, I need to be able to know what kind of operations I can do with lists so I think that's the most important part here mm. so list uh, list, list, list. Okay, so it's a part of collections, right? It's a part of collections. I still don't know what out means. Uh, get index of is empty. Q 
Can you do something like drop? Okay, that's cool. You can drop and stuff like that. Do you have head? First. Okay, it has first. Also first or null, that's cool. Uh, maybe that's exactly what we want to have here. First or null. Mm. Cool. So I think I know what I'm going to do. Uh, while tokens. Mm. What's called parse s sex per. Right. First or null. Right. First or null. I wonder if I can do something like when. Uh, okay. Uh, val. Let's call it first. Uh, if first not equal null. We're gonna start with this thing. First, it's a token. We take the token type and uh, we can check whether it's token token type um, open parent open parent uh, like this. So then we're gonna have close parent and dot. Uh, to be fair, in this particular context, we expect um, only open parent or symbol. Anything else in this specific context is actually an error. So we only expect symbol. By the way, what is the bottom, ty uh, bottom type of, uh, of Kotlin? Uh, Kotlin bottom expression. Like undefined. Uh, undefined. Any or unit to do. Okay, thank you. So, uh, and the, the type of it is nothing. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Thank you. So I can do something like this. Uh, that's cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that's what I was looking for. Because I'm like starting developing top down, and when you develop in top down, it's just nice to have these kind of things. Right. Um, and if we encounter something like that here, I think I want to just throw an exception indicating that Parson has failed. Uh, how do you work with exceptions in Kotlin? Uh, X. Uh, exceptions. Try catch finally throw. Uh, when I'm throwing an exception, how do I throw an exception? What can I throw there? So I can throw exception. Can I just do throw exception? Okay, throw exception. Uh, unexpected token. Unexpected token, and uh, we're gonna literally just put that token here. So like this. Hopefully that will uh, work. Mm. <clears throat> okay, so... Um... Yeah, it would probably have to be wrapped in parentheses. Probably has to be wrapped in parentheses. What's well, weather like where you are? I don't know, you can look it up. So I live in Novosibirsk. Just go to the internet, uh, to any weather site and put Novosibirsk there and it will probably tell you. Uh, okay, so in here we'll have to return something. Okay, so let's return just new for now. Or maybe I'm gonna also put to do here because I think I can. Um, let me call it. Uh, to be fair, it's not that cold, but we have like a snow. I think it right now. Like the last time I checked, it was around minus fifteen, right? So it's minus thirteen. Oh, okay. So oh, yeah. 
it's not that cold because usually it goes down to minus 30 like in when the wind like actual winter kicks in it's gonna be minus 30 uh yep mm. but we all have warm coats in here so it's not that big of a deal <laughs> um it's not like yakutsk where you can have minus 50 <laughs> Which is actually a thing, like people live in the cities like with minus 50 and they're totally fine. Mm. I wonder if I can google like uh, interesting photos of Yakutsk. Uh, it's like one of the coldest cities in Russia. Uh, yeah, it's essentially Yakutsk. It's always cold in here. Yeah. This looks like like, like an average day in Yakutsk. Minus 50. Anyways. Um, <clears throat> what I was doing? What I was doing? Uh, yeah, I wanted to check if it compiles. It seems... Yeah, okay. It seems to be compiling. And uh, this is unreachable code and everything. So when we have like open in pairing, that means we need to parse the list. Right. But if we see the symbol, if we see the symbol, uh, we can just simply... Um, was there a very bad blizzard in Russia recently? Where exactly? <laughs> Russia is pretty huge. Just, uh, just for the reference, uh, Russia has 11 time zones. When you say something happened in Russia, could you please clarify where exactly? <laughs> uh, um, um, I don't know. A lot of things like happen in Russia every day. <laughs> just, um, okay. So uh, symbol and symbol is going to be just essentially just first text. So that's how it's going to go. Uh, largest country in the yeah, in the planet. Yes. Your mama Russia. That's why she's so big. Ah, ah, got it, got it. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Are you Russian? No, I'm American. Can't you hear that from my accent? From my Kikona Freedom accent? Uh, <clears throat> mm, okay. So, uh, when we open in parentheses, uh, so what I'm thinking. To be fair, like this thing has to modify list. Is it possible to pass? Uh, probably not. Uh, we probably have to go full on parser combinators on this thing and return a pair of uh, S expression and the rest of the input. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> if we want to be like functional in that sense, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, so in that case, we'll have to do something like tokens drop one, right? So I wonder if it's gonna work. Um, let's see if it compiles. Uh, <clears throat> let's see if it compiles. Kotlin don't have tuples. I think I saw tuples. God damn, it doesn't have tuples. Shit. Oh, shit. Um, pair. Okay, so it does have payers at least. Um, sure. Let's give it a try. Mm. All illegal access uh, operations will be denied in the future release. Cool. Uh, and how do I construct a pair? I suppose I construct it like that. Right. That's probably how I construct it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, by the way, Kostika, you actually was really helpful uh, on this stream, so you're trusted now. 
thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, that is cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking. Yeah. Uh, I think if there is nothing here. Oh, by the way, if, if there is nothing th here, what should we return? Um, yeah, I, I'm going to think about that a little bit later. But in any case, uh, I think we need to introduce another parser. We need to introduce another parser that parses the list, like parsed list. And it accepts the tokens. <clears throat> uh, list token. And returns a pair yet again. Uh, S expression. I'm not sure if it has to return S expression, but maybe. Yeah, I think I think that's that's gonna be okay. Uh, at least token stock the rest of these things. All right, cool. And when we see open parent, what we essentially do, we just go ahead and try to parse the uh, the list. So parse tokens, and that should should be all right. So and then. Um, now, you have a great accent because it's easy to understand you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was working on my accent for quite some time. I know that it's, you know, Russian accent, but I'm really glad that it's understandable at least. Um, all right. So how are we going to go about that? So we'll have to keep the tokens in some variable, right? So we'll have to keep them here. Hmm. I rewatched Boomer Development Series and your accent has improved a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm working on it. Uh, as I'm trying to. The chat also helps a lot because they, uh, from time to time, point out how, like, what things I pronounce incorrectly and stuff like that. Um, okay. I don't know how to call that. Let's call it input, and this is going to be tokens, and this is going to be a variable, and we can do something like while tokens is not empty, while it's not empty, or tokens first uh, not equal to actually it has to be type not equal to token uh, type close parent, right? close parent. Uh, while this condition is true, we're going to try to parse these things. Oh, and first of all, um, input has to start, right? Uh, first or null, uh, first or null has to be equal to, um, mm -hmm. we just need to assert that uh, we have something there. Maybe I can just do something like drop one. Maybe that's going to be okay. It's kind of a hack. Uh, this is hackish, but maybe I'm going to actually fix it a little bit later. All right. So uh, essentially what I do, I do parse S expression. Mm, parse S expression on these tokens. Right. And I receive some sort of a result. Right. So this is the result. And I need to append that result somewhere so maybe <sighs> because i need to collect them somewhere so i need to build the list yeah i, I, I think I'm, I'm gonna build the list so similar to how i uh, used it when i tokenized things so i'm gonna build the list uh right so and then here i really like this paradigm of building the list i think it's a great paradigm um so and the result oh and an input has to be actually here <clears throat> so the input will become the second value of the result i'm not sure if it's actually the second but whatever and we're adding the first element of the result so i don't know how to work with pairs so i'm gonna just try to compile that and maybe it will work we'll see we'll see mm, we'll see how it goes Mm -hmm. Subtract. Welcome to the stream. Okay, build. Oh, okay. I also have to do something like OPT. Uh, 
otherwise it's not gonna work. Otherwise it's not gonna work. But that should give me some sort of a list. Right, um, so this is a list. And then I need a way to convert that list to, uh, how is that called? I forgot, the, the S expression list. Uh, so that means we'll have to have a function. Uh, S expert list. So this thing will accept items and it's going to be a list of S expressions uh, and it will produce an S expression here. But this entire thing is not implemented yet. Right, and so that means I can just take this entire thing and turn it into S expression list. Uh, like that, and I can just return it like that. So that should work, hopefully. Um... What's up, Hearns and Bots? Welcome to the stream. I'm really glad to see you. I didn't catch your... Uh, the end of your stream, did you manage to set up the FreeBSD thingy? Did, was it successful or was it worth the effort? Uh, mm, you managed it. Okay. I didn't look into notification notifications whether you submitted the pull request or not. Oh, yeah, you submitted it. Okay, I can see that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I usually ignore my, my notifications. Uh, but yeah, uh, I can see. Thank you so much. So you, you uh, tried to test it out on Sulum. Nice, nice. I, I will take a look into that. Thank you so much. That's actually super cool. Okay, so type mismatch. Uh, oh, yeah, this thing is expected to be... All right, this one is interesting. So maybe I'll have to do it slightly differently. So here's the input. Uh, and then we can take this and here, here we're ha gonna have a list. Uh, so maybe we're gonna call them items. Yeah, so this is items. And uh, the thing I need to return here is player as expression list of the items and the rest of the input. There we go. So this is what we're doing. Kotlin, yes, I'm trying out Kotlin. Uh, I never tried Kotlin really, so... Why not to try it? Mm. Okay, so it seems to be working. It seems to be twerking. Mm. Cool. So right now we don't support dots though, so this is something that needs to be uh, actually uh, taken into account. Uh, no support for dots in the list syntax. And by dots I mean uh, things like one, two, three, right? So we don't support that yet. Uh, I don't know whether we're gonna support that at all, but yeah. <laughs> um, so. I think the easiest way to implement this kind of thing would be uh, recursively. So if um, we can take like first, it's going to be a while first, uh, items first or null, right? And essentially if first equal null, the S expression, I'm not sure why I'm making it like that. The S expression has to be nil, right? This is going to be the S expression. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be cons uh, first, as expression list items drop one. So this is the easiest way to do that. <laughs> I know that it's slow. Uh, and I don't, I don't even know if Kotlin supports like tail call optimizations to make it faster, but I just couldn't be bothered. <laughs> so, um, as expression list is probably slow and requires something like uh, tail call optimization. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if Kotlin supports that. All right, so it seems to be reasonable. Uh, okay, after we parsed this S expression, okay, so we know that this is that. Um, so if we don't have any tokens here, like if we provided like empty tokens, I think we should throw some sort of exception, uh, like end of input or end of file whatever right so this is what's going to happen uh, otherwise this entire thing should return us um, a pair 
And this is something we can try to return. Yeah, so this is essentially what we can try to return. And that should work. Let's try to compile that one more time. Mm -hmm. Okay, tail call uh, recursive functions. Nice. Oh, well, shit. It's not going to actually work here, I think. Um, yeah, because... Um, yeah, this is not tail recursive, for sure. It's not tail recursive. That means I need to rework this entire thing, but it's nice to know that it supports that, so it's kind of cool. You making a game still? Yes, I'm making a game. Sure. No, I'm trying, uh, trying uh, Kotlin. Uh, oh, there's a, like a special keyword called tail rec. Yes, I see, I see. It's a special uh, uh, keyword called tail rec. Mm, okay. So it seems to be compiling, uh, right? Uh, we have a bunch of tokens. We got a bunch of tokens, and uh, now I should try to parse those tokens. Uh, parse, sexper, cool. Not sure if it's gonna work. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but we'll see. We'll see about that. So parse, sexper, uh, and hopefully that will work. Thank you for exploring me that. I really appreciate that. Oh shit, that actually didn't really work well. Uh... All right. Why it didn't work? Um... I think I know why. First of all, we dropped uh, dropped this single thing. Oh yeah, I see. Uh, after that, uh, I need to. Aha. Uh -huh. Input. That's quite important. Input. No tokens should be actually taken directly here. So this is inputs, and after that I should drop inputs one because it will become uh, a closing parent. Uh, I think that's basically the mistake I've made. Hopefully, how can you focus while well? talking? I've been doing that for five years. Mm hmm. Okay, so <sighs> that compiles, yeah, it's horrible. An expected token, close parent and no text. Uh, yeah, that's really weird. But why I didn't drop that? So, okay, while this thing is not empty and type is not close parent, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Compile slow, but it runs fast. <laughs> classical JVM bullshit. Fucking classic. Okay, cool. I think. Uh, Line count. Oh shit. What am I looking at, by the way? Okay. Do I have to do it like that? Probably. The output is actually kind of unreadable. I don't understand what it's trying to tell me. I don't understand what it's trying to tell me. 
Yeah, so it's it feels like it just prints some sort of bullshit. Uh, let me double check. Um, so what is that? Oh, maybe I should actually be a little bit more like careful. And uh, parse as expert returns pair, right, right, right. So that means I have to take the first element of that pair. And that is going to be the expression, whatever expression we manage to parse, hopefully. We'll see. Um, so I think it's something is going wrong. Um, we'll need to troubleshoot that. We'll definitely need to troubleshoot that. Mm hmm. Only it compiled a little bit faster. Yeah, that's cool. It managed to parse only like the first thing here, um, which is really strange. Um. Mm -mm. Two, 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 two. Okay. Ah, I know what's going on. There we go. Now it should work. Now it should work. Now it should work. About that. Now about that. Fucking... Okay, it worked. It actually parsed everything. So this indicates that it managed to parse this entire thing. Okay. We managed to parse as expressions. How about that? Yes, we know how to parse as expressions. Actually, get ignore that shit. Like the the jar files. Nobody cares about jar files. Jar files are kind of cringe in 2020. Imagine using jar files in 2020. My God. All right. Um, implement uh, as expression parsing. There we go. I'm gonna push that right into the repo. And by the way, the repo with the source code is available right here, if anyone cares, sure. And uh, the next thing is going to be actually evaluating that expression. How about that? So we're going to have a function, uh, eval, right? What it does, it takes uh, S expression and returns you a new S expression, a transformed one. Um, okay, this one is going to be kind of complicated because we have symbols, but I don't think we have numbers. So we need to learn how to uh, parse numbers. We need to learn how to parse numbers. Uh, maybe it doesn't fucking matter. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the S expression. Um, and if S expert is uh, cons, right, this is cons, and uh s expert um what is it first um equal symbol plus if it's equal to symbol plus that means we need to um evaluate the sum right we need to evaluate the sum so essentially how we're gonna do all of that um we're also probably going to have uh, another situation here. Uh, right. Okay. When this thing is a symbol plus symbol. So essentially what we're trying to do, we're trying to m make this expression evaluate, right? So this will multiply one by two and this will multiply three by four and this will sum up the result. So we're gonna have like a simple S expression based calculator, right? Uh, so, um, and if we ex uh, experience something else, um, so we can throw an exception. Uh, exception cannot call uh, as expert first uh, as a function. So this is going to be the uh, the exception here. Uh, all right. So then, what do we here? So it's a, if it's a plus, we just need to iterate through all of the elements of the list, evaluate them, and just sum them up. So we'll have to have some sort of results. It's probably going to be like this. And uh, then we're going to have, 
args, I suppose. So this is what we're gonna have here. It's gonna be args, and I do s expression uh, second. Yeah, there we go. While args, args is cons, right, while args is cons, what I do, I uh, basically take the first element of this thing and I evaluate it. You see, this function becomes recursive. It's a recursive evaluation about that. Um, I evaluate it and I actually uh, expect this thing to be a symbol, All right? So if x uh, is what is symbol, if x is symbol, uh, We'll have to do that, but if it's not simple, we're gonna do something else. Oh, at night, hello, welcome, welcome to the stream. Hello, hello. Um, so if it's not a symbol, we're gonna throw an exception. Throw exception. Uh, expected symbol, but got uh, X. There we go. That got X. So we're experimenting with Coughlin, and what I'm doing right now, I'm just writing a simple calculator based on S expressions. So essentially our goal is to parse this thing and evaluate it. Right, so we're gonna support plus and uh, multiply operations and stuff like that. And this is just purely to get the gist of the Kotlin. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, the idea. So far it's a better Java, right? Java by itself and JVM ecosystem is kind of meh, in my opinion, and Kot Kotlin just, you know, makes it a little bit better, but still, all of the jankiness of the ecosystem is still there. Uh, but overall, it's, it's kind of cool. I especially like automatic casting, so this is like you dynamically check whether X is this particular type, and once you do that, from within the if block, xx will be automatically casted to symbol. This is actually super nice. Um, yeah, I really like that. Mm -mm. So uh, now, uh, x is a symbol. And uh, after that, I can try to text, uh, take a text. And I want to turn string into an integer. And I don't remember how to do that. I think like Java had parse int of some sort. Yeah, let me do Kotlin, um, Kotlin C. Mm, Kotlin C. So, for example, if I have one, two, three, can you do parse int here? This is exactly how you call a function, Mr. Tsoding. And I don't know why I could do it, but I'm so dumb. God damn it. <laughs> ah, parse int. I think, I think it will work, hopefully. No, it's not gonna work. Does it have two int? Uh, you already found it. Oh shit, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, that's actually super cool. So, and if it's not an integer, right? If it's not an integer, uh, what it will return? It will throw an exception, which is okay. So this is exactly what we do right now. X to int, and we just add that to the result. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Adam. Um Yeah, that's essentially what we're doing. Uh, hopefully that compiles. Mm. There is to int on no 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 in in this particular case I want to actually throw exception so that's totally okay. Um, and uh, I did a fucky wacky. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. I should actually stop recompiling every time I fix a single error. It doesn't really work here because the compilation times are so big, so I should probably stop doing that. I should probably try to first fix all the errors and only then try to recompile. <sighs> okay. Ah! I have to first extract the text out of it. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> There is. I'm using it right now. Unresolved reference text. Ah, it's called name. A right. oh, return expression requires a function block body. 
not really sure what they mean here. Oh, yeah, yeah, so after that we should return something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so after that we should return something. Yeah, so after that I can simply return a symbol result to string like this. And then I can just return this thing. Uh, I might as well actually be able to do something like return if. And if this is not a cons, then I can simply return as expression itself. Yeah, there we go. So that could be it. That could be actually it. Uh, that could be actually it. Mm. Please compile. <laughs> oh shit, it compiled. Okay. So we have um, evaluation for plus. So now we need evaluation for multiplication. Uh, and I think it's going to be similar, except instead of doing plus here, we're going to do multiply. So for now, I'm going to uh, just copy paste the code, right? We're going to just copy paste the code. Uh, but then later, we'll have to maybe extract it out into like more general function and whatnot. Mm. We'll see how it goes. All right, so seems good. And let's see uh, what we can do here. So what's going to be the result? So this one is going to be 12 and multiply it. Okay, so it has to be 24. The result of this expression has to be 24. And let's find out if it's actually true. I'm going to eval and I'm going to just try to evaluate whatever we manage to parse. Mm. Oh shit, I'm actually scared. Is it working? Is it working? I don't think it's working. Um. Oh yeah, I'm gonna just... So the, the thing is, is that after that, uh, I have to keep iterating. So it has to be args equal args. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, I forgot to iterate. I forgot to iterate. So args equal args. Uh, and uh, I have to take the second one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's kind of important. Uh, that's why it stays on the on the same iteration, so that's totally my fault. So essentially, I was not iterating the list of the arguments of the function, I was trying to evaluate the same argument over and over again. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's totally my fault. Uh, okay, so hopefully this time is gonna work. Um, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, I'm a Pepega developer. What do you want from me? I'm Pepega and I'm proud. Okay. Line count zero. Why does it say line count though? Um, cool. It says zero. Nice one. Uh, okay, so uh, let's call it result by the way. Um, let's simplify something. Let's actually test them separately. So what if I do uh, one plus two? Will that produce the expected result? Um, Actually, I should stop using minus b flag, right? Because it tries to recompile. Jian, welcome, welcome to the streamers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It produced three. Would you look at that? So we already can compute this kind of thing. What about multiplication? So that means there's something wrong with multiplication. That's for sure. Um, ah, I see. Zero. It has to be one. It has to be one. What's interesting is that, okay, in lisps, right? So, oh my God, come on, Rakit, come on, come on. Please, 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 please. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. So uh, you have something like that. But what if you call multiply without any arguments? Will it return one? It will, because it's a base case. Okay, so it's kind of similar in this situation as well. All right, all right, all right, cool. So that should work now. Uh huh. So it should return to hopefully. Mm -mm. 
didn't know that. Well, yeah, I also didn't know that. I just discovered it right in right in the stream. So let's let's go back to the original case here and let's run it and see what's gonna happen. 14. Well, yeah, it's it's because it's a plus. It's not 24. It's 14. Yeah, yeah it has to be 14. So yeah, we're able to parse these uh, S expressions and we are able to evaluate them and we implemented all of that uh, using only Coquelin and using only standard library. So yep. So in, in how, how many uh, lines it took? It, it took 172 li lines. And bear in mind, this is technically my first time programming in Kotlin. Seriously, I never programmed in Kotlin before in my entire life. I, yeah, so this is literally my first, this is a raw reaction to the language. Almost raw. As I already said, I checked language out nine years ago when it came out. It was a really long time ago, but I just looked like downloaded compiler, uh, compiled Hello World and then I forgot about it and never touched it again. So, but I do have a lot of experience in Scala, in Haskell, C++, or a Camel, and stuff like that. And I just use that experience to program in Kotlin. I'm pretty sure this is not idiomatic Kotlin, uh, but this is my first time, this is my first attempt at programming in Kotlin. So let's uh, commit that. Uh, implement as expression evaluation. So I'm going to push that right into the repo. If anyone is interested in this piece of code, I'm not sure if it's useful for anyone, you can find it here. And unfortunately, boys and girls, it is time for me to go. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one and I see you uh, actually on Sunday. Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's stream is canceled because I'm going to be out for the whole day. Um, so, but on Sunday we're gonna do um, we're gonna do the game development. Check the issues. Did you create an issue for that? Get them. Uh, it's gonna take some time. So yeah, tomorrow there will be no stream. Um, um, cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's a, that's a good issue. Thank you so much. Tomorrow there will be no stream, but is, on Sunday we're going to have a stream. And on Monday we're going to have another game development stream, just to, you know, uh, instead of this uh, uh, Saturday one. So, yeah, uh, check out our schedule page. Uh, check out our schedule page for more information on different projects we're working on. Check out our VOTS channel, uh, where we upload all of the streams. This stream is going to be on that YouTube channel as well, but tomorrow we upload them on the next day. And also check out our Discord server for offline discussion with the community. So, yeah, and while you're waiting for uh, more streams in the future, Let's maybe raid somebody. We haven't raided people in a while. So, does anyone streaming Coquelin right now? Do we have any good candidates for raiding? Candidates for raiding? Let's see, let's see. Uh, I just need to wait until the Twitch website loads up. Uh, okay. So... Let's raid toggle bit, I suppose. Right. Ah, come on, Twitch, come on, please. Uh, toggle bit. All right. All right. Get ready for the raid, boys and girls. Get ready for the raid, and I see you all uh, on Sunday. Love you. Mwah.